Our goal in this video is to update activity main.xml, which defines the UI for our application, and update it to include the different components that we'll need for our coronavirus tracker. Once we've done that, in the next video, we'll be able to wire things together and actually have the data that we parsed out in the last video together with the UI component that we add in this video and be able to show something on the screen. Taking a look at the final UI of our application, there are a couple different UI components on the screen. At the top, you have the label for this dropdown, and you also have a dropdown which is called a spinner on Android. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to ignore that spinner and just have the state text view shown there. Below that, we have something called a radio button group. And the radio button group contains three different radio buttons. And the idea of a radio button is that it acts somewhat like a normal button, except for you can only have one out of those three buttons in that group selected, which makes sense because we only want to be able to graph one of these metrics in our line chart below. Below that, we have a line chart. And in particular, this is called a spark chart. And we'll talk about how to integrate the Robinhood library to include this. Below that, we have one more radio group, which has three radio buttons. And then finally, at the very bottom, you have two text views, one which is for the date of what metric is being shown. And then to the right of that, we have the metric corresponding to that date. Here's the default activity main that comes in with any empty project. The first thing I want to do is delete the default hello world text view and instead bringing over one more text view. And for now, I'm just going to go into the de design tab. We're going to toggle between the design tab and code tab quite frequently. And just to give myself more room, I'm going to open up the design tab and make that the only thing shown on the screen. So we have this text view um, on the UI. I'm going to call this TV, an ID of TV select state. Give this a text of state. And then have it be 16 DP to the from the top and left. Let's also make the text larger, the text appearance large. Next, I'd like to bring onto the screen a radio button group. So I'm going to go into the button section and bring over a radio group and then have the width of this radio button group be match parent, the whole width. Let's zoom in a little bit. Have this be constrained to the bottom of the state text view. And then inside this radio group, we want three radio buttons. So I'm going to take the radio button and drag it inside of the radio group in the component tree. The first radio button will be radio button negative. So we'll have a text of negative. And also let's make the layout with wrap content rather than match parent. So it shrinks. Let's copy over this radio button two more times. So we'll have one more for radio button positive. The text will be positive. And then one more for radio button death. In order to have these radio buttons be horizontal rather than vertical, we need to set the orientation attribute of the radio group. And it looks like the width here should also be wrap content. Same as this. Okay, and then also we want to center the contents of the radio group inside of it. So I'm going to select the radio group one more time and set the gravity attribute and have the gravity be center and then apply. So now you can see that it is in the center both horizontally and vertically. Below this radio group, we'd like to have a line chart which shows the data on a per day basis. So to do that, we're going to use a library from Robinhood, an open source library called Spark. And this is a library to show a simple Android Spark line chart view. So if you scroll down to the very bottom, then we can copy over this line that we're going to add into our Gradle build file. I'm going to open up the build.gradle file, which is located in the app module. Add that in, and then tap on sync now. While that's syncing, let's go back to GitHub and we can see how to use this. Um, there's a section here about usage. All we need to do to include this Spark chart in our application is add the Spark view to the layout. Right, going back into Android Studio, we can open up the activity main.xml file. And to add the Spark view, I'm going to go into the code tab. So if we can just start typing Spark view here, 
and then Android Studio will help us with autocomplete. The width will be match parent because we wanted to take up the whole width of the screen. And the height, for now, I'm just going to hard code in 150 dp and we'll change that later. Uh, one thing we need to do also is we're going to position the spark view vertically below the radio group above it. So I added this ID on the radio group called radio group metric selection. So now we can say the top constraint is to the bottom of the radio group metric selection. We'll also give the spark view an ID of spark view. So let's see what this looks like in the design tab. So you can see that we have a space allocated for the spark view. So below the spark view, we have one more radio group. And this is going to be vertically positioned below the spark view. We'll give this radio group an ID of radio group time selection because it'll be used to select the time range of the spark chart. We'll add a 16 dp top margin on the radio group. And then we're going to do something very similar to what we had before. Where we add in three radio buttons, update the text and the ID, and position them so that the radio group is horizontal. The three time scales that we're going to allow the user to pick from are the most recent one week, most recent one month, and the maximum amount of data that we get returned from the COVID tracking project API. As of today, the max will typically be a period of around four or five months because we start getting data back from the API around January or February. The last thing we need to do to complete our basic layout is add the two text views at the bottom of the screen. And these will be relative to the bottom of the parent or the screen and not relative to the elements above it. So we'll drag out a text view, have this be 16 dp from the left end of the screen, and constrain it to the bottom. Uh, and let's also give this a height, a hard-coded height of 80 dp. This will be a text view for the date, the date label. And let's change the text appearance a little bit to make it body one. And let's have one more text view, which is also 80 dp tall, the same exact height. And this text view is going to contain the metric value. We'll say TV metric label. This is going to be relative to the right end of the TV date label, and it'll be to the bottom of the parent. The gravity for both of these text views is going to be center. And this text view is going to extend the whole remaining width of the screen, which is not taken up by the first text view. And let's provide some sample data for each text view. For example, this metric, it might, let's get rid of the text attribute and let's use the tools namespace here, which is this wrench text. And let's put in a sample data point of 4,354, just to see how it might look. Let's make this text bigger. We'll say display one as a text appearance, so it becomes a lot bigger. And then for this text view over here, let's also put in a sample date, May 30th, 2020. Our goal now is to have the Spark view take up all of the height remaining in the screen once all the other widgets are placed. So the way we'll do this is actually allocate the widgets above the spark view and below the spark view and have them be glued to the top or bottom of the screen. So rather than having this radio group be relative to the bottom of the spark view, I'm instead going to delete that constraint, the top constraint, and have that instead be to the top of the bottom components that we have, like that. Now I'm going to set the bottom of the spark view to be the top of this radio group. And instead of hard coding the height, to be 150. Now we can just say match constraint and that should now fill up the spark view to be all the remaining height. So now we have completed the basic layout for our COVID tracker. In the next video, we're going to go back into main activity and fill out this to do. So we're going to get rid of this to do and actually reference the spark view that we put on the layout and populate it with the national daily data that we parsed out from the previous video. I'll leave a link in the description to the code we wrote in this video so you can take a look at the raw XML if you want. If you've gotten this far, hit the like button to let me know and subscribe so you get notified when the next video comes out, which I'm really excited for because we'll finally be able to display some meaningful data. See you in the next video.